three years ago we were up here doing the tally track with MDC soft floor campers. We brought a new hard floor range this time and a caravan and I brought Heath along for the ride. What do you reckon Heath? We're going to get them through? Mate, this is the first trip ever up here yeah. and the camp trails and caravans are going great guns. I think the only thing I'm worried about is the cars making it. <laughs> They'll make it mate. Let's drag them through, eh? Let's, Let's do get it. into it. Cape York. For 40 years I've been coming to this incredible part of Queensland and you know what, I reckon I'll be coming back again for the next 40. It's a special place for me and a special part of our country because, well, you get all the best bits of our Australia all in the one place. The sprawling cattle stations of the outback, the lush greenery of the tropics, water, water everywhere and don't get me started on the beaches. But we're not going to see any of it if we don't get out of this mess. You've joined us right in the middle of Palm Creek, the very first crossing on the legendary old telegraph track. I can just grab hold of that, Heath. We're heading from here all the way to the tip of Cape York, testing out a few of Market Direct Camper's latest release trailers in the process. It's a big ask, but we've got the right crew for the job. Young Tyler's from the MDC workshop. He's here to see how his handiwork holds up on the track. Pete's also from MDC. It's the first time in the Cape for both these boys. I reckon they're in for a baptism of fire this week. Everybody clear of the road. My mate Kenno's done a heap of driving up this way, but this time he's brought the whole house with him. An MDC XT10 off-road caravan. Nice job, mate. Lovely. Oh, well done. <laughs> Bringing up the rear, another mate of mine all the way from Melbourne. It's all purpose Al. He earned the nickname because he's good at just about everything. Just the kind of bloke you want on a trip like this. Hey guys, I remember my first trip up to Cape, you know, up to the top. It was 1975, I was, gee, I was a lot younger, I was a scruffy young bloke too. And uh, there wasn't anywhere near as much traffic. But I'll tell you what, since then, this place has just developed an absolute cult following. Yeah, it's definitely a bucket list thing, John, and the, the telly track throws everything at you. It's your first time up here, is it, Heath? Hey, this is a bucket list, a dream come true, getting up here, get to the tip. And uh, so far, it's been uh, red hot, awesome fun. Uh, you know what, I was just thinking, I was a scruffy young bloke back then, driving an ancient motorcycle. And here I am, a scruffy old bloke driving an ancient truck. Something's never changed. As well as Keno's XT10 van, we've got a couple of the new hard floor camper trailers. A cruiser and a Venturer. We'll take a look inside a bit later. For now, it's just a matter of getting them to the end of the track in one piece. Though the entire telly track's only a bit over 100 k's in length, it's pretty hard going all the way, with obstacles to catch you out at just about every turn. When you're on tracks like this, it pays to be prepared. With the MDC campers, you get two spares. People say that's a bit much, but you've only got two wheels on the trailer, but we're going through one, we're only 13 k's in. When you're prepping for Cape York, it pays to think a bit like old Noah. You want two of absolutely everything. Even two blokes to tighten those wheel nuts in this case. You're a long way from the nearest tow truck and getting recovered out at this place can turn into a very costly affair. Nowhere better demonstrates the cult status of the Cape than some of the naming conventions. All the creek crossings on the telly are known on a first name basis. 
talk to anyone up here about Nolans, Cockatoo or Cannibal and they'll get exactly what you're talking about. But if there's one name just about every 4B owner's familiar with, it's Gunshot. As you can see, this crossing's claimed quite a few trophies over the years. This is the one that everybody fears. Over the years, this has cost me a right hand CV, a back axle, uh, a big radiator repair and an exhaust pipe. And you know what? There's only one way to deal with gunshot. And that's carefully put the truck into gear, put on the rear e-locker, and back on out of here, baby. And take the chicken truck, if you're clever. <laughs> There's just too much destruction in that one for me. Most crossings on the telly have alternate routes, and the chicken tracks can be pretty tricky anyway, so you can have a bit of fun, but without breaking anything. There's a cleared campsite on the northern side of Gunshot. It's about as basic as they come, but we don't need much. The campers are packed with everything. Think of the best four-wheel driving you could do anywhere. You know, like a week's worth of uh, sand and water crossings and rock climbs and sharp little dips and everything else you can do in a four-wheel drive and then end it with some great camping every day. You know what? You get all of that on the telly track in one day. No wonder everybody wants to come up here. It's wonderful. breakfast of champions. The perfect way to prepare for another day of four-wheel drive fun up around the top of Queensland. Big breakfast eat up, we've got a big day. Oh, Giddy up. Giddy. Let's get amongst it. We're in the Cape, field testing a couple of new releases from Market Direct campers. You've joined us smack bang in the middle of the telly track, which runs right along the original telegraph line. My first Cape trip was 40 years ago. And since then I've seen just how dramatically the seasons can affect this place. From the flooding wets to the baking dries. That's really solid guys, it's great fun. Right car. A tad smelly though. You're at the mercy of the weather up here. This year's wet was a little dry, but now it's raining almost every day. There's plenty of rivers and plenty of mud. When I first did the telly, it was mostly just a track, you know, just two wheel tracks, grass in the middle, fairly flat. And over the years, there's been so much traffic, most of the time you've got several options and there's all sorts of different wear patterns going on. It's not so much vehicle wear, it's also the fact that every wet season, anything that's exposed winds up copping huge amounts of water. And so, at the end of the wet season, this place is just one big series of erosion gullies. And then of course the vehicles come along and knock it all back into shape. And that is the adventure of the telly track. And a whole lot of cake milk for that matter. Depending on the time of year, you can dial in your own adventure. Full on, or just a little bit more sedate. track will see you in and out of half a dozen water crossings. Most of these are just ankle deep, but there's a few that'll soak up to the sills. It's a situation where you want to be sure the water and dust sills on the vans are up to scratch. Not a problem for us. <laughs> okay, that was the southern part of the telly. And boy, was it fun. It was a whole lot more fun for me because I was running 17 PSI all around. That kind of lets it float over the sand. But now we've, we're going to duck out on the northern part. We're going to take the development road. And that's a whole lot faster for the next 70 k's. So I'm going to pump my tyres back up. It's a good idea to do that. Don't get too complacent because that's where the real accidents can happen when you're gunning along at a bit of speed on a semi-flat tyre. About halfway up the telly, you can detour onto the Peninsula Development Road, a graded stretch of dirt that'll run you right up to the Jardine River. 
The Jardine pretty well divides the Cape clean in two. The only way to get across is the ferry, which is run by the Northern Peninsula Area Regional Council. John is our skipper today, a local fella who loves his job and is fiercely proud of his country. Do you get to see people when, a lot of people from down south, when they get here, this is the best day of their life. You know? Oh yeah. It really is, because they finally, they almost made it to the top of Australia, to the tip of Cape York. That's pretty big for a lot of people. And there's a lot of questions with that, with that when, they, when they come through here. I mean, it's everything to do with where to go to and yeah. where's the best place. And then I said, well, you're in the best place already. And this is my office for the day. So um, yeah, it's, it's all a, good. Not a bad office, is it? It's nice. There's a lot of people, you meet everyone. John, what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen come across the river? Well, when they organise this running from the Cape all the way down to Tasmania stuff, <laughs> this one guy is going to run that run from here all the way down there, and I said, I couldn't even run from at the top down here to Jardine, mate. <laughs> a return trip across the river will set you back about a hundred bucks for the car, or one thirty with a trailer. And given the only other option swimming these days, I reckon it's well worth it. Pushing on to Loyalty Beach, a privately run campsite on the northwest coast of the Cape, where time just seems to stand still. <laughs> what do you reckon, Heath? Mate, tell you what, I don't think we could find a more spectacular spot. Welcome to my favourite place at the top. I've been coming here for 20 years to Loyalty Beach and it's never changed much because it never has to. Mate, this is magic. Your 20 years, this is my first, and I tell you what, how good are these islands all in here? And you know what the best news is? The four metre croc's been penned. <laughs> so there'll be no 7.30 float pass to the old croc. The big advantage of having the trailers with us this week is how quickly we can set up camp. The Venturer and the Cruiser have been designed with off-road camping trips in mind, just like this. They're both hard floor campers, so it's all solid ground underfoot. They also have their own built-in kitchens and plenty of storage for all your gear. But the different layouts mean they can be utilised for very different purposes. Everyone is moving towards hard floor camping yes. trailers and loving them yeah. for a few simple things that they do. For example, the Venture over here, your rear fold. You've got massive room, heaps yep. of storage. It's great for a family because yes. you can throw all your gear in there and get away. Then you can go away with something like the Cruiser over here. Yep. Now the beauty of the Cruiser, forward fold. So it sits in the footprint of the trailer. Yep. Yeah. The great thing also too for me, I love it, you set up like what we're doing here, nice and late. Yes. We've got table, chairs, inside, ready to rock and roll. We can sit, eat, drink, do what we need so to do. So you could have mum, dad, three kids and then convert it to a dinner set up for a couple just that quick. Bang, yeah. like that. Yeah. It's yeah. really that easy. A caravan or camper trailer side here at Loyalty Beach will set you back 32 bucks for the night. Cheap as chips, really. And speaking of tucker, you can also get a good food at the restaurant. I've been lucky enough to have spent a big chunk of my life on the road and the one thing I never get tired of is meeting people enjoying their own journeys. Milo and me always manage to draw a crowd, but if it helps get the next generation as excited about getting out and exploring the country when they grow up, then I reckon we've done our bit. And exploration's the name of the game today, pushing further up into the Cape. OK, guys, I reckon we'll just look at maybe another 40 odd case today heading north. Uh, oh, we'll be uh, in camp in half an hour. Oh, no, mate. I've got a couple of backtracks in mind. I oh, thought we could just experiment. Another one of John's shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And if this map's know. anything to go by, it's going to be a long day. Oh, come on, We better boys. get started. <laughs> right, oh. That's just what Milo does to things. Look at me. I'm only 28. There's a beach just north of Loyalty that not many people know about. A pristine stretch of sand. Well, except for a couple of old rust buckets that blew up in a storm. Ha! At least there's something up here that's looking worse than my life.
it's only a short run before the track heads back inland, where you'll find a very well placed fresh water underbody car wash. We think of absolutely everything up here. But then I suppose you need to be ready for just about anything up here. Of course it wouldn't be a proper shortcut if it was the easiest way from point A to point B. Now would it? Did you hear that sloshy noise? You know what that is? That's about six inches of water that came into Milo. She sloshed in, and now it'll slosh right out again with a bit of luck. Deep water with soft, silty sand. Pretty typical of the creeks up around the tip, and it's all part of the fun, really. Last time I came through here in my leaf sprung truck, I got hung up exactly the same way, and it's caused by a big hump underneath the water that's uh, been pushed in by coil spring trucks. Now I know that because there was an 80 series coil spring truck that came through easily after I got stuck last time. And uh, this time around, I think that's what's going to happen with the patrol. I think Heath will be okay, but we'll see. All right, here we go. Get it up, Heath. That's it, come through. Well done, mate. Okay, next. That'll be you, can I? So by this point, the word shortcut's starting to ring a little in the back of my head. Give it the berries, can I? That's it, mate. I well don't. I don't think she's going anywhere. Go, mate. First gear low range, nice and slow. Don't pick it up. Beautiful. Turn that way a bit, can I? Right, let's just try and drive from there, can I? No, no, don't leave it. Next tree. Some kids just never grow out of playing around in the mud, do they? You're out. Good boggy. It's quicksand. <laughs> well, it might be slow progress, but you know the saying, many hands make light work. I guess there's a reason you won't find this shortcut on any of the maps. A pretty full on day in the end. Nothing that can't be fixed with a hot shower and a couple of cold drinks. Unfortunately, we can get both at Punsam Bay. It's another one of the clean and comfy campsites that cater to the ever-increasing numbers of people coming up to the Cape each year. They've got their own restaurant here too, famous for the wood-fired pizzas. But I've got something special in mind for our boys, a home-cooked meal, sure to fill the spot after a big day playing around in the puddles. Not a bad way to finish another incredible day in Cape York. We're at Punsam Bay, the most northern campsite in the country, just a couple of k's south of the tip. How was that, eh? What a glorious sunset. That was just incredible. Look, we've got a whole bunch of guys here. We're all hungry. We want something tasty. We need something loaded with carbs at the same time. I reckon vegetarian pasta. I've got hickory smoked bacon, which as everyone knows is a vegetable substitute. And um, we've got some Italian sausages. Ken oh. Mate, can you knock those up on the barbecue? Nothing Don't like worry, having mate. a few guys along to help. Thanks, mate. Heath, would you mind uh, chopping up some onions, mate? Oh, mate, I can manage that. Keno's XT10 Caravan's providing the kitchen and the barbie for tonight's cook-up. This poor van's had a hard life. Keno's taking it everywhere through the Victorian high country, across the desert, and of course right through the telly track this week. Slide these ones in, mate. <laughs> Good on you, Heath. Thanks, mate. Gee, we've seen some rough tracks, haven't we, last few days? It's been testing the gear out. It has, hasn't it? They've done really well, though. I mean, look at this. Mate, they have handled the tracks brilliantly, and uh, how good is it for in the camp? having the luxuries that we have all at the fingertips, nice and easy. Your kitchen, how oh, good's this? Mate, look, I have cooked in some absolutely gung-ho situations, you know? Side of the track, grass to here, pigs running all over the place. 
And here I am underneath this shrouded roof with lighting, LED lighting. I don't think it could get much more comfortable than this. Kenno's customised his van with a couple of optional extras, including the great big wraparound awning that provides plenty of protection from the hot sun or the driving rain. And they get plenty of both up this way, I can assure you. And it's the beauty of this annex. It's so massive, you can yeah. throw its swags out under here if you want it. And then you go inside, <laughs> and of course you've got your queen mattress, hot and cold showers. I know, hot and cold water in the sink, and a four burner stove. Mate, that's a full kitchen. No, I don't actually have a kitchen as good as this at home. Right. In fact, I'm not allowed in the kitchen at home, so I wouldn't know what we've got, but certainly nothing like this. And then doing this remote stuff that we're doing, three yeah. batteries, yeah. plenty of power to yeah. run everything that you need to run. It's gold. It is, mate. It's super comfortable. I'll tell you what, I wonder how Kenno's going with those sausages. It's worth pointing out that despite this van being in and out of the water like a tea bag all week, there's not a drop anywhere inside. And no dust for that matter either. Chuck in the sausages and a couple of other ingredients that have been rattling around in the back of Milo the whole trip, and you're done. There you go, mate. Oh, what happened to this one? <laughs> oh, Milo took a piece out of the plate, mate. You got hungry. <laughs> mate, uh, this oh, is well. beautiful. Hey, pretty good? It's all right. I think it's all the vegetables that make it. That's what it is, mate. of basing yourself at Punsand is that you're only about 15 minutes from the tip itself. The last leg of the journey requires you to actually leg it over a hill and down to where the very top of Queensland sinks into the sea. Oh, years ago there was only a couple of little cans but the tradition is now that everybody puts a rock on. It's the end of our journey and the end of a pilgrimage for plenty of people who make the trek up this way from all over Queensland and all over Australia for that matter. Hey guys, we made it. Wonderful. First time Heath. This yeah. is awesome. What do you reckon mate? I tell you what, it's been a fun old track getting up here but this is a magic spot. <laughs> a lot more people here John than what you would have had oh, when you first yeah. came here. Well you've been here a couple of times haven't yeah, you? Mate, yeah. Yeah. yeah, first time I came here there was well, there wasn't any people. In fact, we used to sort of pretty much ride our bikes over the top there. But um, you know what? Over the years, better roads, better four-wheel drives, better access. Accessibility. More Australians get to come to the tip. It's, good, it's yeah. good to see people getting out and seeing the country, isn't it? Oh, I and we've met the same people and families <laughs> the whole trip, and they're doing exactly what we're doing. It's fantastic. I think it's something, something about coming to the tip that every Australian has to do at least once. And now you've done it. I've done it. Tick that off the bucket list. Thanks for coming, boys. Now you just got to bring the family up. I know. That's the next trip. Oh, I'll bring the Muppets next time. Yeah. We had two goals this week. Firstly, we were looking for an adventure. And secondly, we wanted to see how the gear holds up in some of the country's toughest conditions. And I think you'll agree we experienced above and beyond on both fronts. Market Direct campers have showrooms in every capital city. Well, you can check out the full specs on all the trailers we tested out this week, as well as the rest of the MDC lineup on their website. Well, we've made it, guys. The most northern tip of Australia. We dragged the trailers through the telly track. They're here. They made it too. Broke a few cars, but we fixed those. The trailers have not missed a beat. Congratulations, Heath. You're here. Thanks, mate. It has been an unreal adventure so far. Those trailers, dead set. I wasn't worried about the trails, mate. I was worried about your Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> but it surprised me, mate. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. And uh, I also looked after you, mate, bringing you the did. caravan. You did. I've been very comfortable. It's been wonderful. Air conditioning, the whole lot. Oh. I've been cooking on it. It's been fantastic. Great breakfast. John's done a great job. Right. Pretty now, brilliant. Now we've just got to find another track to uh, drag them trailers home. We're not going to Development Road. We're going to go the long way. Hopefully we see you out there on the tracks, eh? 